and I just want to make aware that this disease is not not fun it's really deadly share this video guys make people aware that there's a disease out there that can kill lorikeys <laughs> Hey beautiful CVPs, welcome to my channel. I am Caroline von Petzl. Thank you for tuning in. It's a beautiful day. We are right now here in the dry lake again. I have hope and love with me for free flying. It's beautiful. It's 75 degrees, like around 25 in Europe Celsius. So I have the birds right now here in the car. Let's get them out and let's get them up and fly. Ready? Go. Was it fun? Okay guys, so today it's beautiful and um, we just took their first flight. Both of them are really good. Um, Love is a little lazy. He likes to fly back to the car. He doesn't like to fly back to me. So he knows that the car is a safe place. So Hyacinth aren't really good free flyers, just FYI. Um, if you have a Hyacinth and you want to free fly him, they're not really good free flyers, but hope he, he's a pro and he's He's happy. Yes. What are they doing? They're feeding each other. So I wanted to take today Angel with us. And Angel knows when we go free flying. And he's kind of like a little punk. Because he doesn't want to come free flying. And I put him in a little cage. He doesn't want me to put him in a little cage. So it's always like an act to get him out of the cage. And put him in a little cage. And today I got him in a little cage. But then guess what <coughs> happened? Glory did this. Glory sabotaged <coughs> this whole thing. She went up on the cage kitchen counter and dump Angel's cage and then Angel was free and he didn't want to get into the cage and then he played with me catch me if you can kind of game and I was like you know what forget it I was just gonna take love and hope today. and Glory was just like always screaming you want to come over hi hi see after flying they're so cuddly are you happy 
so happy so happy i came extra earlier guys i woke up at 5 a.m this morning just to fly my birds and uh, drove three hours now this is real commitment very very commitment this is a lifestyle so we are having a lifestyle right now right should we go take our second flight are you ready for your second flight what about hopi So after flight sessions, both of them are very cuddly, especially little love, so cuddly. You too. Hi, Hopi. Hi. Hi, Hopi. Oh, I love you. So guys, I'm not afraid of Hopi anymore. After the bite, I was a real, yeah, he's stretching. He was a little scary. Um, he was very territorial, very harmonious, and I got to fix the problem. Yes, I did retrain him, which was amazing because look at him now. He is just amazing. He's back to his old happy self. We love each other. We are like this again. I forgave him. Hey, where do you think you're going? And he's really cuddly and he's amazing right now. So no more funny business. Hey, what are you doing? The key was retraining, retraining. I also put my hand on him and pray him and bless over him and just anoint him. And ever since that, like just, he made twick, like twick, like twick and something amazing just happened and he's back to his old beautiful self. So they're all relaxing right now, having a snack. Hey, you're happy? You guys happy? Hi, Hopi. Hi, Hopi. You happy? I love you, happy. Ha <laughs> ha!
not the knife. Hi. <laughs> so guys, oh, hope he wants my hat off. Hope he, hope he no. Hope he don't. Don't do that. Hope he doesn't like my hat. And if he's not happy, he dumps it. Oh no. What are you trying to do? I want to talk today about a very bad disease. Just oh no. I want to talk today about a very bad disease that only um, affects rainbow lorikeets. So it's called the lorikeet um, paralyzed syndrome because it only affects lorikeets in the wild in Australia. And I'm very concerned because I have a lorikeet as well at home. So guys, I found Angel. We saved him. I have one nectar eater. They're nectar eater. They are amazing birds. They're little clowns. It's so sad to see about this, this disease what's happening right now what's happening right now in Australia and I just want to make aware that this disease is not not fun it's really deadly what's happening with the wild lorikeets they just are unable to fly then they're unable to walk and then they're unable to blink their eyes or even leave their eyes open and then all of a sudden they just die and they are being treated in Australia to the thousands. So many lorikeets come in, the lorikeet paralyzed syndrome. And it's just so sad. And I just want to make you aware that there's a syndrome out there that affects lorikeet that will eventually kill them. I want you guys to watch this clip. Um, but before we do it, go get my book, angelicparrots.com. And here's my merch, angelicparrots.com, angelic parrots. It's a beautiful day to free fly and it's a beautiful day to be alive. The roll the clip. We're seeing large numbers of lorikeets coming in at the moment to the RSPCA's Wildlife Hospital. Lorikeet Paralysis Syndrome, or LPS for short. It's a disease in lorikeet and we've been seeing it for about 10 years here. Where the birds lose their ability to fly, eventually they can't walk, they're unable to blink, their voice changes and eventually they're unable to swallow. So if untreated, those birds will die because they can't feed themselves. It's mainly a disease on the Sunshine Coast, Brisbane, a bit up to Gympie and the Gold Coast. So it's really around this region. And it comes every year around summertime. We see just short of 4,000 lorikeets every year here at the RSPCA. Well, at least half of those birds are affected. Here. Another one that's affected. Dan, how is your gal? Look at that with a lorikeet and not get bitten. No way. I mean, you can hear this change that's very different from a normal lorikeet. You can see it's also very sticky, so it's probably been on the ground for quite a long time, um, unable to fly, unable to feed. Generally, I would say four to six weeks they have to be in care before they're good to go for release. We're in the peak of this season at the moment. As you can see here behind me, there's at least 21 in this aviary. I've got lorikeets in every aviary at the moment because we're running out of room. It can be quite challenging to find enough carers and you know space to hold them all. Yeah, we can have up to 100 birds in care at any one time here, which is obviously a huge uh, resource implication, particularly those that are really sick because they require lots of nursing care. If we, only we could just ask them, <laughs> what have you eaten? <laughs> So I've collaborated with a lot of researchers and we've published a, an article that describes everything we've done so far and where we're going in the future. But we found someone that can actually look at plant DNA. He looks at feces or intestinal contents and can tell with the DNA what the lorikeet's been eating. And we're collecting a lot of samples to try to find a plant or a fruit or something that that's specific to the lorikeets that have LPS. It's very important for them to, once they regain their ability to fly a bit, um, they're still not 100% for probably a month. And they recover much quicker if you put them in the large aviary so they get their strength back and then we can release them from there. We're able to treat it. it the lorikeets recover quite well, but it's a lot of work and a lot of intensive care for them. So it's not a quick turnaround. Certainly the last few years the numbers seem to be getting larger and larger. We don't know what causes it, we suspect that it's probably a, a toxin in a plant that they're feeding on. We're doing lots of work with the University of Sydney, Griffith University and the Australian Registry of Wildlife Health but as yet we don't have a, a good understanding of what causes it. I started asking some researchers to see if we could find what it was 
And since then, we've just been doing test after test after test and everything's coming back negative. So it's like a challenge for me. Share this video, guys. Make people aware that there's a disease out there that can kill lorikeys. And it's really, really sad. So um, if you have a lorikey that is unable to fly all of a sudden and then can't walk and can't even open his eyes, then um, please, please go and let this bird get checked out. I don't know if there's a cure for it, but they are being treated. Um, but it's just really sad because those lorikeys are really beautiful birds and they're really expensive. Right now they're they're running here in California for like fifteen to seventeen hundred dollars. But um, lorikeys are very rare in California. Hey, that's my whistle. That's my whistle. I think they want to go fly. Let's have them go fly. Okay, love, come here. Opie, come. Let's go fly. Okay guys, we're gonna fly one more round and then we'll call it a day. It's getting hotter and it's really important to take breaks between sessions and flights. They just have a nice water break and nice food break and they just had fun. So now we're gonna uh, do, so now we're gonna do our last flight and then we'll call it a day. Hi guys, come, come, come. Hi, you come, Hobie come, Hobie. Caroline von Petzold. Go check out my shorts. I have pretty awesome shorts. Go check out my book angelicparrots.com if you want to get your bird up and flying in the air. That's the only book you can get in free fly and behavior training and trick training and every training with birds. I love you guys and I will see you on next time in a new episode of Caroline von